In this video, I wanted to talk about changing and how how often it's so hard to change and some of the reasons why. And then also how to change with God on your side and how that makes things a lot easier. You know, I'm only going to speak of things I know that I've experienced that I have some kind of knowledge or wisdom on and change is one of those things and I've gone through some changes in the past I don't know year or so but really those changes have come about over the course of a few years and sometimes that's how change goes. It's um, it's a slow process. So it's like, say if you're quitting smoking, you quit and then you go back and you quit and you go back and you might feel like each time you go back, you've failed. But it's not quite like that. Any success that you have in towards stopping that habit whether it's porn or alcohol, any cutting down or stopping is progress, even if you do regress. Because the thing is, is that we go back to the familiar. You always hear about relationships where people go back to the person that was abusing them and why would they do such a thing? It's because they're used to the familiar. They're used to... They're more prone to go back to what's familiar than to go into the unknown and take the risk toward a different kind of future. Maybe because they lack confidence or whatever it is. But oftentimes we become stressful or anxious or unsure about our lives and we run back to that addiction or to that person. And when we're in this in-between state, we could call the unknown, we're vulnerable. We're, we can be easily swayed because we're kind of weak and we're kind of subject to the past I used to always regress back to my old ways and even though my old ways were causing me to fall into depression and even though it might not have all been my own fault A lot of it was because I went and did things that hurt me and stressed me out and eventually took me down into depression again. And then I would be clear of, say, substances for a while because I would be in a depressive hole. And then when I got out of that depressive hole... I would regress back to doing the same kind of things, the same kind of behaviors that l led me down to getting depressed again, to led me to feeling depressed and falling into a clinical depression. Now that's almost like doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, the definition of insanity. And I would definitely admit that I'm my own worst enemy. And I think most of... I think everybody is mostly their own worst enemy for the most part. But one thing that has changed my life and that has allowed me to not fall back into clinical depression. I'm not saying that I don't have my hard times or struggles. 
but I've never been clinically depressed like I was in the past before being born again in Jesus Christ. And that's a testament right there because I suffered through so many bouts of depression where I would be literally out of life, out of commission, not working, not doing anything except for staying in my home and that being my parents' home. So in that case, they're shopping for me. They're they're buying the groceries. I'm literally not leaving my house except for maybe to go for a walk kind of thing. But the fact that I haven't fallen into depression since before, since after 2010 is an amazing thing. That's 14 years of being clear of clinical depression. That's not to say I don't experience mild depression and I don't have my bad days. But to be 14 years clear of not falling into the clinical depression, and I don't know what you, if you guys have ever experienced that, but it's like hell on earth. And when you, some of us are prone to fall into clinical depressions, others will never understand it. But basically, if you're stressed out for, this is what happens to people that get clinically depressed. They're, they're stressed out over a long, long period of time. And eventually their body just shuts down on them and as a defensive mechanism. And they're literally in the dark. Like they, like I was where you, you don't do anything. You just literally, you wait for it to pass. And that can be like a long time, like a year would be around the average time it took for my clinical depressions to pass. And man, I'd, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. It's, it's like, obviously I haven't been to hell, but this is hell on earth. Everything is dark. You see no light. There is no light at the end of the tunnel. And you feel like the, a complete failure And you feel like you're so messed up that you don't think you'll ever get out of that place. And honestly, you're just holding on to a thread of hope. And if you're lucky, you have parents or loved ones around you that can support you through that. Because without that, I don't know how I would have gotten through because if you if you're not capable of socializing or working you know how are you going to provide for yourself how are you going to be able to have an environment where you can recoup and get better and not create more stress for yourself I have a, some scriptures here and these scriptures are about changing and oftentimes we what I originally wanted to talk about I kind of got regressed there into talking about my own past with depression but the idea of this is that when we try to change bad habits and we overcome these things we're often stuck in a place of unknown the unknown where we've lost part of our, our identity because we're no longer an alcoholic or 
a cigarette smoker or a porn addict or whatever it is. And we may have let go a lot of guilt surrounding those things or shame, but we find ourselves in a place where we don't quite know what to do with ourselves. And in order to move forward, we have to take some risks. And oftentimes, this is where we regress back to our old ways. And one of the main differences, I believe, in being able to move forward with your life and to not regress is to have God, to have Jesus Christ in your life and to trust in Him to pull you in a new direction and to trust in Him to provide security, provide peace for you in this time and to give you hope for a better future. And sometimes that's all we need in this in-between unknown space is just to trust and to believe and to have God by our side. And I mean, God isn't just some fantasy, it's some crutch. This is the living God we're talking about that died and rose again. The living, alive God that can comfort you, that can be with you. Uh, we're gonna, we can read with me through some of this. And this is some scriptures that we're going to stand on in order to help us through change. Going through change can be challenging, as you know. But with God's guidance, we can navigate these transitions with hope and confidence. The first scripture, Romans 12, 1 to 2. Therefore, I, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, I offer to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. See, God has plans for us, and those plans are good. And this one scripture is one of the scriptures that was one of the first scriptures that I really learned that I was able to recite in my mind. This one about not conforming to the patterns of this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what's that mean? It means don't follow the world's ways. You know, don't do all of the, the things to make you fit in and to be accepted by others. All the things that are trendy or whatnot. This is not going to gain you favor with God. This is going to make you lost, actually. So, we don't renew ourselves by jumping into the world and following the world and finding security in the world and people's opinions. But we find security in God's word. In learning about the, the stories of the Bible and the words that Jesus said and the scriptures that have been recorded for us to use, to speak, to carry with us in our hearts. And so by relying on God and by getting in the scriptures and knowing about the promises of God, we can stand on those scriptures and God can be our rock through these hard times. And this is how we renew our life, renew our mind. The passage that I just read encourage us to, it encourages us to surrender to God and allow Him to transform our minds rather than conforming to the world's standards. Next, we got Jeremiah 10.23. 
It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. God reminds us that we cannot rely solely on our own thinking and reasoning, but instead we must seek his guidance. Sometimes people have a um, wrong idea about submitting to God. But that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to submit to Him and to put our anxieties, our worries, our concerns into His hands and to, to give Him our depression. You know, submit to Him. God help me. In our weakness, it says in the Bible, it's in our weakness that God can be made strong. So when we're going through change, we can't just rely on our own power. We can trust God. God help me. We can pray to God like he's a friend. This is a personal relationship we have with Jesus Christ. There's nothing like it in the world. And we can have a, a conversation. God, help me. I'm not sure where I go from here. I want to make some moves, but I'm a bit timid. Help me not be in fear, Lord. Take this anxiety away and direct me in my path. Help me see through your eyes. Show me which way to go, Lord. Direct me by the Holy Spirit and give me peace in this time of transition. Let me hide underneath your wings. Next verse, scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. This verse reminds us that through faith in Christ, we can leave our old selves behind and emerge as new creations, ready for the changes ahead. If you're a Christian or not, you can still, you can talk to God, you can pray to God. Sometimes you need to experience God and the peace of God in order to take that, that leap of faith, in order to following the Lord and asking Him into your life. When we become Christian, are born again, our old nature, our old patterns of behavior, it says we're a new creation and the old things have passed away. And oftentimes people think that when they get saved, everything's, they're going to just be free of sin completely and they're going to be high on life every day. And it's, it's really not like that. It's, it's a real process. And oftentimes people regress or they continue sinning when they know it's wrong. But the difference is now is that in God, they're convicted. God convicts us of our sin. And so we feel a certain amount of guilt and shame like we never did before. And it becomes very clear that this sin that we're doing isn't right. And with that conviction, God convicts us. <laughs> we can't continue to keep going down that road or we're going to be literally stuck. We're not going to be growing in God and we, we might even lose our salvation. Next scripture. 2 Timothy 3.16-17 All scripture is breathed out of God and profitable for teaching for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped, equipped for every good work. The Bible serves as our ultimate guide, providing wisdom and direction for navigating 
life's changes. God's our rock. You know, we, we can use these scriptures. We can, we can type up a search scriptures for change like I did here. And you can speak these words. You can say, God, I stand on this scripture. I stand on 2 Timothy 3.16-17 to where you say that all scripture is breathed out of God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction. You get my idea. You find, you find a scripture that resonates with you and you speak those words and you hold those words in your heart and you say, God, I trust you. Help me here. I believe in your word. Show me the way through this and give me peace. Next scripture is Ephesians, Ephesians 4 to 22 to 24. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to be put on the new shelf created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. This passage, this passage encourages us to shed our old selves and to put on the new Christ-like nature as we undergo transformation. You know, oftentimes we want the our outer world to change. We want to see ourselves in, you know, maybe a new job or relationship or with more money or with more friends. But often we, we in order to get those outside things, we, we need to work on our inner selves. And we need to sacrifice some of our old patterns and throw them into the fire so we can be born anew. And it talks about here that when we're in God, we're, we have a new, we're a new create, creation. We're a new cre creature. And our old selves, our old patterns of behavior and the old man that we used to be is passed away, is no longer. And you need to remember that and to trust God and to find yourself in these scriptures. Let go of the past and you need to fill the void there with God's word, with trust in God. And without doing that, we're often empty. And then the world has a way of taking us back to our old ways because God is it who changes us deep down inside. He's the one that provides a new path for us and gives us a new beginning as a new create creation. Remember, God is always present in guiding us through change. As we fix our eyes, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on God and his word. Keep your eyes on the scriptures. We can trust he will equip us for every good work and lead us into a brighter future. Thanks for listening. If you found this content helpful, throw me a like and a subscribe. We'll see you next time.